Hey, howdy. Man, it has been ages since I've recorded Isaac for the channel, huh? The last time I did was for the RPG Brain Rot Pack when it was half done. This isn't that, but either way, I've started to dip into the wonderful and weird world of Isaac modding using Lua. And today I'm presenting the first actual mod that I've created that warrants a full video to discuss. It adds nine new items, all of which center around a common theme. Tartarin prisoners. So, in the Greek and Roman underworld, those who have committed great grievances during their mortal lives are sent to the iron walls of Tartarus to pay for their crimes for all of eternity. Each of them have some punishment worthy of their sin, and there's a central theme of futility and actions that lack function. They're kind of just forced to do things for all eternity, knowing full well that those things are never going to lead to anything. All of them have representations as items in this mod, and all of them occupy a space in the planetarium room. So let's just go over them one at a time. And kill the music. I like the music replacement, but it's a bit distracting. First guy we got is Sisyphus. Probably the most famous of the Tartarin prisoners. He's the bolder guy. But to go into a bit more specifics, he was a king who killed his guests, seduced his niece, and snitched on Zeus during one of his, uh, booty calls. Initially, his sentence was simply to be chained up in Tartarus, but after asking Thanatos questions about the nature of those chains, he chained death and escaped. Because Thanatos is the embodiment of death itself, his capture meant that there was no more death for a time. He was eventually recaptured, but sometime after that, he convinced Persephone to let him go back up, to go back up to the mortal world, to scold his wife about not burying him properly. Hermes dragged him back down when he refused to leave. For his various crimes, and being a hassle in general, he was forced to roll a massive boulder up a hill, with the boulder being fated to fall inches before it reached the top, forever. So the theme here is doing something with steady progress and then failing right at the end. Please give me rooms with combat, thank you. So with this character, a lot more pickups drop. In fact, I think I have, uh, let me find the, this is the starting room, okay. It was numpad 2. I should just be able to... In a room with actual combat, that is. There we go. If I go above three keys, three bombs, 15 cents, or four red hearts, I'll lose all of that... I'll lose all of that stuff. And I'll use, well, let me just get myself some breakfast so I can show off the hearts one. It's, it's a dangerous effect, but the trick is that you get it all back very quickly. The next customer of the damned is a different king. Ixion of Lapiths. The Lapiths, by the way, I actually had to look this up because I didn't know who they were. They were the first set of kings in, like, mythological Rome, let's say. He grew to despise his father-in-law, and in a similar manner as Cain and Abel in the Bible, Ixion committed patricide by tossing him over a bed of coals. All the princes of the, of the land demanded that he, he not be given any penance, but Zeus decided to take pity on Ixion, and rather than punish him, he invited him to Olympus for a feast. However, he got there and immediately fell in love with Hera. Big mistake. After, um, caressing her under the table, gross, Zeus scolded him, and as they were going to bed for the night, Zeus constructed a cloud copy of Hera and sent it into Ixion's room to see how far he would go in his lust. Well, Ixion made love to the cloud, and Zeus immediately tossed him from Mount Olympus in a fury and struck him with a lightning bolt. 
His punishment for, for this burning lust was to be chained to a massive burning wheel, which would spin in Tartarus forever. You might have already seen the stat changes, but the themes here are fire and spin. So here's my take on it. By spinning in a cir by spinning in circles, you gain a temporary, pretty meaty damage boost and a speed boost. It's difficult to maintain because obviously you need to keep moving for it to remain active. But the forgotten base damage is five, and I'm doing like nine. That is very good. And the numbers are amplified a little, or hell, they're not even amplified. I think they're down a little bit. Because I am, because I'm forgotten and it's applying flat damage, it's actually, it's effectively going to be doing a little bit more when playing as characters other than forgotten. But I like forgotten because I like the skin I made for him. You can also do this as a, just a cheap way to get a lot of charge. But that wasn't intended, so I'm not going to try. Next up are the Danaids. 49 of them, in fact. Though they're not all good. Obviously, they're not all going to fit on one item. The Danaids were actually a set of 50 daughters who were set to be married to different king's 50 sons. On their wedding night, each of them were instructed to murder their betrothed on their special night. All but one of them obeyed. As punishment for their acts, the 49 who did were senten sentenced to fill a tub with cleansing water with jugs, and the tub constantly leaked its contents out onto the floor below. My main stimulus here was filling jugs with water, and this is actually one of the ones I'm most proud of. Let me give myself a tarot card, and let's go with Bob's Rotten Head. You might wonder why. Well, this is probably one of my favorite item from this mod, just for what it does. Okay, it's not a teleport card. Good. So suppose you're being attacked by an enemy. If you're attacked by an enemy... Did you see that? If you're being attacked by an enemy, and you get hit by a tear while you have that... If you're, if you're hit by a tear while you have an item above your head, it will parry it, essentially. You'll get a minor damage boost, and it will damage everything in the room for a little bit. This will be... Let's exaggerate this a little bit and just spawn in a bunch of horfs and hold Bob's rotten head above my head. It's actually quite potent. However, there is a limit to how much you can, do, you can get away with. Like, suppose I spawn in... It's a good example for this. Uh, hush, hush is a good example. Eventually, the facade is, is too much and it breaks. You can get some good some good use out of it, but it's not immortal. And the number of particles increase as you get higher and higher up, and I think that looks really cool. But swapping back in for another run here. Next on the list is yet another king, King Tantalus. Another pretty famous one. Another one that you might have heard, you definitely heard of before. In much the same style as Hannibal Lecter, in preparation for a feast with the gods, Tantalus murdered his son Pelops, boiled him, and served the boiled meat to the gods. This repulsed Zeus, who killed him on the spot. And a quick side note, this is one of those that definitely feels like an editorial by Roman culture. Romans really did not like human sacrifice. They did the gladiator stuff, but they didn't like actual human sacrifice. Seems kind of kind of hypocritical, but because of again because of gladiatorial combat and literally sending people to the lions. But whatever. I'm sure there was some distinction in the Roman mind. He was for, but his punishment 
was to be forever starving and mortally thirsty, standing knee deck, knee deck, neck deep in water and with an arm's reach of a fruit tree. However, both recede from his grip upon reaching for it. The water, return, the water returns to the ground below, and the fruit tree bends away from his grasp. So, this was a weird one, but my main angle here was, sorry, my main angle here was non-conventional or self-destructive forms of healing. So this is what I came up with. Hearts no longer spawn, at all. They're just replaced by flies. The only way that Isaac can heal, in fact, give me a moment. Uh, yeah, I'll just, explosion. The only way to heal is by picking up a trinket, which Isaac will absorb and restore two hearts. So you can no longer gain the effects of trinkets. <laughs> But they're, they're used as a pretty decent form of healing. After that was the giant, Titios. I, I thought it was with a U, but it's actually with an O. Now, quick side note as well. There were also the hundred-handed giants from the pre-Zeus age that tried to overthrow Mount Olympus. They're also present down in Tartarus, but I don't think they're ever given proper names or motivations beyond they tried to overthrow Olympus, so they're kind of boring. I decided to exclude them. As for Titius, though, he was the son of Zeus and a mortal woman, and this woman was hidden deep beneath the earth to avoid Hera's wrath. However, uh, the resulting child was a giant, and the woman obviously could not bear to give birth to a giant... So the woman died, and Gaia herself carried the giant to term. When, he, when Gaia gave birth, the result was this massive giant who tried to rape the goddess of Leto. Luckily, Leto has a son and a daughter, Apollo and Artemis, who split him asunder with their arrows. Down in Tartarus, he's given the same punishment as, as fellow giant Prometheus, bound by chains as vulture ter vultures tear at his liver every day, only for it to grow back each night. So, my main catalyst for, these, for this guy was regeneration and suffering. Awesome. <laughs> so, let me just spawn in some Claudies and wait for it to happen. If you notice, I have a boatload of damage. However, every time I kill an enemy, it has a 33% chance to come back to life with full health. This does not affect bosses, but it's bound to keep your hands full even when it's just enemies. And Forgotten can kind of cheese this. I swear I didn't do that on purpose. I did just say that Forgotten is my favorite character. But with like the cleave of the melee hit, you hit the, the respawning monsters as well. Oh yeah, well. Next up is another king, which, man, Romans hated their kings. Even though they eventually formed a new empire, they really hated their kings. Salmoneus is the next one. His crime is really simple. He just tried to pass himself off as Zeus. As a result, Zeus struck him with a thunderbolt. I don't think it's ever made clear what his punishment was, but he was down there. And his theme was envy, so what I came up with was something to that effect. In fact, let me uh, let me reset so the tit the titius doesn't interfere with the effect. If you're in a room, bam. So what this item does is the first time you kill an enemy in the room it will deal that much damage, or however much that mortal amount of damage was, to every other enemy in the room. So let me reset. Spawn in a bunch of pooters. I think they take two shots by default. Yeah. So it doesn't kill them all outright, but now they only take one hit. And this one actually does work on bosses. I believe if I do Larry here... Oh wait, leave, come back, reset it. 
Yeah, okay, that's actually, that's very cool. After that is Arche, a messenger goddess and the sister of Iris. Arche, unlike Iris, sided with the Titans during the revolt. And when the Titans were defeated, Arche was thrown down to Tartarus and stripped of her wings. Now, the main theme here is actually pretty obvious, just being flightless. So here's what I came up with. As you might have been able to see, the description was forever flightless. Isaac can no longer fly. Seems obvious, but this also includes items like Spirit of the Night. Spirit of the Night. Yes, I can I can spell Spirit of the Night. And how about Lord of the Pit? And Dead Dove. All the effects that would normally give you flight no longer give you flight. But the upshot is that ever, for every flight item that gets nullified by this effect, you're given a permanent damage and speed up to compensate. So, as weird as it sounds, this item that nullifies flight items makes flight items have a use beyond the first stack of having flight. Who would have thunk it? Now, the penultimate prisoner is a guy by the name of Ochnus. He's mentioned in the Aeneid, and I forget where else, but he's kind of a lesser known one. I don't think it's ever actually mentioned why he's down there, but he is just kind of there. And his punishment is to constantly weave straw as a donkey continuously eats his handiwork. So the best way to show this off is to give myself the Book of Sin. It's got full charge. I walk into a room and all of the charge disappears. I clear a room and all of the charge comes back. The gimmick with this item is that at the start of every room, you lose all of your item charge. At the end of each room, you get a full item charge. So, you can use active items for utility only. And they're much better at utility, but you can only use them for utility, barring some specific exceptions. And for some, that's really good. Like, for instance, Tainted Lazarus would absolutely love this. But others, like Judas, would hate it. So again, it's situational. The last prisoner is Phlegius, a man who despised the gods and was cast down to Tartarus after setting the Temple of Apollo ablaze. His punishment was pretty similar to Tantalus, actually as he was forced to watch encased in stone as an eternal feast was laid before him for all time. To be perfectly honest, I forgot this guy existed, so this effect is a little... It doesn't have as much thought put into it as the others, but I still think it's very interesting. It's another effect based on using active items. Whenever you use an active item, your speed is reduced to the minimum, and your tier rate is roughly... I think it's like quadrupled for a period of time. It's a lot higher and it rapidly goes away. It's it's like kidney stone in a way. What is a cap off at? I saw a 10 in there. So I think it is a quadruple. Now granted it's it's uh it's at 10 for one frame, but it is a 10. And it also works with Works the Forgotten as well. But yeah, that's all nine of them. And all of them appear in the planetarium. So hang on, I believe it's two. Uh, no, it's eight. There we go. So I'm in the planetarium. And if I spawn in a bunch of items, we already know that RK is there. Give myself D6. 
There they are. Some of them are popping up. And the others should pop up when I re-roll. Yeah, there they are. But yeah, this was a lot of fun. I'm slowly get my, my mirth of um, items that I'm comfortable making is slowly getting larger and larger. I think next up I'm going to be making custom cards. I think that'll be fun. But I'll, I'll have to post a video about that as well. But that's all I got for now, I think. Thanks so much for watching.